so um there's uh, one thing i would like to discuss is uh, how uh, like in what all places uh, can we use the cloud events and kind of like start uh, thinking over just uh, how the plugin can be used uh, and what all stuff needs to be done so i feel the draft isn't uh, complete in a way because uh, there needs to be uh, pro there needs to be a uh, repo and uh, i saw your review with the newbie friendly issues like without a repo and some uh, understanding there can't be any issues like uh, even with some code i mean so you mean linking to the open newbie friendly issues um yeah the i i in the jenkins project uh, the issues aren't are linked in the in the jira so not as much github issues but that's that's the way okay. um they are handled within the jenkins project so uh, these newbie friendly issues would be related to the plugin only or any newbie friendly no those are just uh jenkins newbie friendly issues so i yeah. I couldn't think of, I didn't have at the top of the mind a newbie friendly issue that would be helpful for someone trying to get to grips with um, cloud events for Jenkins. <laughs> um, but we can, we can look for some, although that might be a little bit harder to find. Your, can I, can I ask you about your idea of having, um, of looking into what the cloud events would, would contain, like what met metadata they would contain? That's pretty hmm. interesting. Are you, are you following um, sort of the definitions and proposals that are coming out of either the CNCF's cloud events work or, or that's being done within um, the CD foundation uh, with the interoperability SIG and cloud events SIG that's becoming its own SIG now? I kind of missed the yesterday's meeting because yeah, that I right. thought it was quite late in the evening <laughs> and uh, it was it was uh, it was much earlier so i i haven't been able to follow that but my uh, the idea i was having about the metadata with uh, jenkins mm -hmm. uh, was around uh, how tecton kind of uh, handles them so my entire idea was like how tecton does it so once uh, once someone subscribes to like cloud events for jenkins they would get to know uh, if a job has been started, if it's failed, and like, and things things like that. So uh, probably uh, this would mean that uh, the uh, when when someone subscribes, we should be able to give the data for the uh, what all jobs they have subscribed to, or even if uh, like this this these are the nitty gritties we need to kind of discuss and figure out. So this is the discussion I want to ha have, like how does uh, does the user subscribe to a particular job or do they subscribe to, uh, yeah, basically a particular job. And once they subscribe to it, uh, what all stuff goes through uh, to the other end of uh, the cloud events uh, pipeline. Uh, like this is, this is what I was thinking about. So. Uh, we probably need to make a table of uh, the what the metadata looks like. So this could be an action item. I could uh, I could take and make a draft uh, table for this one. Something like io dot jenkins dot uh, uh, job. Probably job name dot uh, started uh, true or false. Some something like that. So. Uh, we could have this and uh, so just thinking this makes sense right what do you think Gareth? yeah i think that would help to kind of um sort of flesh it out a little bit more yeah i've got a few like action items on my side i need to i need to go and like be yeah, sign up to the sick um, for cloud events and do a bit more research into it um, before I can provide any sort of yeah value in my review really. Um, 
probably probably next week uh, what we can do is we can actually do action items for like a bit of research and then we can uh, kind of brainstorm over what all stuff can go through so we could do that and uh, so this this would be helpful when creating like uh, event listeners in tecton then uh, like uh, hooking up the jenkins uh, cloud events and tecton cloud events like easily in jenkins itself so something happens in the jenkins job and probably all of that is uh, that stuff is propagated to a tecton uh, tecton task run so thinking along those lines if we can kind of have a chain of uh, things running at some point in time but okay so let uh, let me just uh, get the doc Bibav, you just said that um, a Jenkins dog job will have a corollary of some types with um, a Tecton task. Is that is that which was I understanding correctly? And then you want to compare the metadata between them. Uh, so uh, not not a corollary. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, so what I was thinking was uh, the cloud events that uh, the that Jenkins will create that cloud events could be listened on by tecton and that configuration could be done through the tecton client plugin uh, so that you know that tecton task run listens for that uh, cloud event for, of jenkins so this is this is what i was thinking this is what i was thinking okay so i'm just thinking out loud um but uh, but we should uh, before we go there we should just uh, focus on what cloud events uh can do and uh, kind of figure out the user stories around them so once that is done uh so initially what we'd have to do is uh, we'll have to play a little bit with the cloud events sdk make something simple and then uh, figure out how that works with jenkins and if we maybe enable cloud events for uh, a jenkins job there should be probably be an endpoint uh, like endpoint uh, one something that can be subscribed to and uh, this and whatever uh, whatever other tool is there they should be able to like listen for events to that endpoint so this could be like a first prototype uh, that that could go about so that we understand like how cloud events work and then for the gsoc part itself uh, i want to ask like how do we uh, i've never done gsoc before or like been a mentor i've seen like how it goes about so um, i'm i'm just uh, i just want to ask like how how do we how do we guide students to do uh, particular things like how do we figure out what they can do and what we should like help them with and uh, basically just how do we guide them or and give them things that they can learn i am going to share um your i'm going to share in the chat right here the jenkins guidelines for for mentors so it just gives you a lot of information that you know has been written over the last couple of years um in terms of guiding students it is it does get pretty I would think pretty individualized in terms of the projects, in terms of the mentor's background, and then most importantly, in terms of the student's background and what knowledge they need to gain in order to engage with the project idea. So yeah, that leaves some room for creativity for the mentors. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, so I'm thinking, uh, so for the cloud events plugin, should we bootstrap the project before uh, starting it off, or do we make them uh, start from scratch? Bootstrapping would could help uh, quite a bit in helping the student to get started. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a. I would say that I think that's. I think it's probably a pretty good idea. Um, just going on my experience of getting repos created and set up and things like that and 
like a basic build on day one. Um, that, that can take quite some time. So it might make sense to do that, yeah. I think you, the students would really appreciate it. And in addition, this summer's GTalk schedule has been altered from how it was traditionally done, and it's a shorter coding period. So, you know, if you, you everything we can do to help the students like hit the ground running um, for their coding phase would would be really, I'm sure they'd appreciate it because then that will enable them to do um, more substantial work for the time that they have. Yeah, I, I remember I was, uh, I did ask a friend about it who did it before. Like it was three months and now it's a month and a half, right? Yeah, it's basically been cut in half. Um, so it's a lot shorter. In practice, it's more because the students start engaging now, um, learning about Jenkins in general and thinking about what they want to make a proposal on. Then they formulate the proposal that takes some work and engagement. And then if they are chosen, there's a community bonding phase, which is um, a number of weeks. Um, so at which time they're kind of like getting ramped up. Um, but nonetheless, that shortened full-time coding phase is, is, is a limitation we have to deal with this summer. Um, so everything we can do to help the students is great. Yeah. Actually, uh, for, to start from scratch would have been nice if it was three months, but something like Tecton client plugin, which is a little P in still POC phase and there's still a lot of stuff they can do. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, then we'd have to bootstrap the project then because one and a half month is quite. I can't imagine doing anything in, a, <laughs> in one and a half month. Yeah, it's it's quite a short time, I'd say. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, so. When we bootstrap, till what extent should we bootstrap it? Should we uh, should we kind of bootstrap the cloud events SDK and the metadata stuff? I, 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 yeah, I would have said, I think if, if it's a plugin that we're creating, I think if we can have a kind of like a skeleton of a plugin that does, yeah, doesn't have to have too much in there, but it, as long as it has a, you know, a Jenkins file that's doing a build and some kind of tests and we have the ability to create a, you know, an alpha beta release or something like that, like an early release and people are able to at least, I suppose, install the plugin, even with a few manual bits and bobs, but like there is a bit of a build and a bit of everything else going that I think that's good. Um, I don't think we need to get too much into the, the internals of how the plugin will work yet. It would, it would be nice to be able to, you know, clone the project, build it locally and easily push up a PR and have valid automated feedback on that PR for when they're ready for when the sort of students start on this. Especially if we've only got a month and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah that would be good actually. Oh, uh, I think I think then over the next week this would be like our main agenda like to figure out how to kind of till the extent of the bootstrap probably play around with cloud SDK cloud events SDK okay uh, yeah that makes sense okay um I. I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything else uh, to discuss about the cloud events plugin. Maybe, maybe you have something in on mind on your mind, Garrett or oh, Kara. Nothing on, on from my point of view. Um, I I need to go and do a bit more reading about this, and I need to look at the proposal in detail. Um, yeah, we're going to schedule some time, probably later on today, to do that. Similar. I think this looks good. I think we have a number of action items that I've put in our um, meeting notes for us all to look into and and consider. So, so hopefully we'll have 
more on these uh, next week to circle back and discuss. It's pretty exciting. Hello, Sagar. Did you have any questions? Uh, no. Hello, everyone. Uh, no, I'm just listening. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm just trying to understand um, so that I can explore this one also. And I'm a little bit um, curious in Docker and Kubernetes and cloud events, and this project is related to that. So that's why I'm just, um, yeah, that's all. Do you have, um, since we're all here on this call, we could, we could uh, find this for you. Do you have a good idea how to get started in doing the research that you need to do for understanding more about cloud events? Um, for now, um, um, last time, um, Weber mentored me a little bit. He said that first try to understand Docker and Kubernetes. Okay. So, um, but for understanding Docker and Kubernetes, I need to know the REST APIs and backend stuff also. So this week I learned about MongoDB and Express and Node and all the stuff. Now I will try to, um, now I will, um, integrate Docker with that and then further I will move on hopefully then what problem actually we are solving. Yeah. I mean, that's good. Yeah. Sounds very good. I'm glad you're having a good time with it. Yeah. So, um, so if, so about the Tecton plan plugin, I, I am still thinking, so I didn't end up uh, getting to the draft because I was still thinking like, uh, what will, uh, what can be even done about uh, the client plugin? Like it's, it's not, it's, it's in a phase that it's a, it's a, the POC is done and uh, there are, there is a lot of stuff the students can actually do. Uh, if uh, considering the timeline that is there right now, initially I was thinking uh, maybe the three months uh would would be a little uh a too much and maybe the uh maybe the project might get over prematurely so i was just thinking if it is uh, like how do we handle that but i think in the scenario that we have right now it makes the the tecton plan plugin uh, kind of fits very well into what can be done yes. so so what I'll do is I will uh, create a draft for it and then uh, go share it share it with you guys on on the GSOC channel and also uh, on Gitter channel. So I'll do that. And uh, anything like in particular, Gareth, like uh, you would like to or uh, you have any ideas for the client plugin? Like maybe there is that one feature we would love to see after that one and a half month of coding probably catalog support or something that would be very cool or like dynamic uh, tasks that like like picking up our tasks like dynamically from the drop down menus for a task run stuff like that uh, that is on your mind anything um yeah so, so i've been on your recommendation from last week i've been looking at the tectonos code um sort of is it text on this code or copy? Yeah. And proposal. Um, and this is sort of a few of them out there and a few different pocs from what I can tell. But that's the kind of, I suppose that's the kind of thing that I was envisaging. So not so much the UI side of it or the UX, but more of the, um, yeah, like a, like a dot tecton folder or something where you can automatically pick stuff up from within your Git repo and have it, um, so however the client would work, it would need to pick up the particular one and schedule the pipeline run with the right parameters. Um, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a bit hard to say because I think at the moment they're just proposals. So I don't think there are any sort of like concrete implementations of how that's going to work anyway. But um, that might be a good, I'm just thinking, yeah. so would, would Jenkins be like an intermediary between Tecton when we do this? Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's kind of how I was thinking. Um, 
we have we have users that have you know large Jenkins installations and lots of builds, and they want to want to go all out on Tecton mm -hmm. from day one. So providing like you know whether it's the ability for them to view all their jobs in the same place and have a you know a git repo that is listed and looks that seems to be configured in the same way and but when the job is run it's actually kicked off as a tecton pipeline and then that could be you need a jenkins file and a tecton folder inside the same git repo to be able to do it but yeah, just have have a method was, uh, thinking like it's it makes more like i was thinking if uh, like if we could do something like have a jenkins file only but yeah. make it run like tecton dsl so yeah. that that seems because if we if we do like a dot tecton the tecton as a code uh, developers they've already kind of I, i'd say monopolized on the dot dot tecton part so i don't know maybe maybe uh, i mean the dot te the dot tecton is quite nice because it fits with the you know the the dot lighthouse for jenkins x and dot github and all that for well, if I forget how um, it does do it. Maybe it is just an integration between um, the Tecton client plugin and the Tecton as code piece. I have the ability to, to do that kickoff. Um, maybe maybe that, that that's as kind of simple as it needs to be to begin with. Um, so how do you, so how do you uh, see the Tecton as code uh, integration with Tecton client as a plugin? Uh, I'm not. I, I, I'm not sure yet. Um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm. I'm thinking it's a. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, it probably needs a, because the scope of the client plugin and the Tecton as a code. I'm just thinking how that would work out. That's all. Yeah. Can um can you share the Tecton as code like a link to the Tecton as code in our chat and I'll put it in the meeting notes. One second. Okay. Uh, I'll try and follow it from this GitHub issue. That is the Tecton as a code repo. Okay. okay. Awesome. So this Thank one is, cre is uh, being created by one of my colleagues and he is uh, bootstrapping it as well as making it production ready. And it's, it's, it's doing actually quite well. The only uh, thing we're waiting for is to get this merged into Tecton. Uh, like the Tecton CD uh, group, so but it it works very well actually, and it uses the Tecton dashboard uh, to see all the Tecton tasks running. It's quite good. Nice. So. Probably what we could do is we could read the Tecton as a code, uh, code, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, understand like how it works and probably recreate the uh, experience. Yeah, because this is Python, isn't it? I believe. Yep, it's, it's yeah. Python. Yeah. So this would be recreating the experience in. Java. Okay. Yeah. So when you say recreating the experience in Java, do you mean recreating Tectonis code, doing a Java version of this, and then integrating that with, is, is that what you're referring to? Did I understand that? Yeah, uh, like yeah, what I did for the Tecton client plugin was kind of similar. I mm -hmm. read a lot of the Tecton CLI code, and I basically just understood how a lot of the stuff worked there, and then I just replicated that entire thing into a Jenkins plugin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so including uh, like how uh, getting the logs for the tech tasks and all like simple stuff also like it it worked out pretty well nice so okay so we could probably do that and uh, we just need to figure out if it makes sense to do it or if it if it is even possible that would take some reading but uh, probably we could keep this for next to next week uh so because this this week seems fully uh, fully of full of cloud events so <laughs> probably we'll set it for next uh, next next week okay so so for the um, for our next meeting we'll focus our research on finding doing doing these action items on cloud events following week we'll focus a little bit more on um the taxon client plugin i think that's probably a good way to break that up yeah that, that yeah. sounds good actually so we could uh, next week as you said we will uh, discuss cloud events and uh, uh, the extent of the prototype as well as the task students can do for cloud events plugin and then post that we can discuss uh, the tecton client plugin and what needs to be done for that and maybe a few issues that uh, students can start picking up for the client because there are actually a quite a lot of issues that uh, students can just start picking and you know playing around with it uh, probably we can just uh, so i'll create a draft and share it today uh, after this meeting so, so um, I've just reached out to the Jameses on the Jenkins X Dev list to see if um, to see what they're doing with the Lighthouse. So when they they have something that is very very similar to the Tectoner's client Tectoner's code um, piece, where it reads everything from the from a dot Lighthouse directory, and the reason it's called dot Lighthouse is just because of that's the name of the component inside JX mm -hmm. that does the work. But essentially, it's just a it's a dot folder that has um, a list of tasks, you know, YAML files of tasks and pipelines or whatever, and they get applied um, and sort of run. What I'm asking them is, are they doing any manipulation or rewriting or you know enhancements of of those files before applying them um, inside JX? Because um, I think that would be. I think it's quite. I think it's very similar. What we're looking at doing, we're, we're pretty much looking at a yeah Java implementation of that piece, so it can run from inside um, Jenkins. So yeah, that that would be, that is that is actually what we're looking at. What would be uh, very interesting is to have existing uh, Jenkins users just run the jenkins file with some simple dsl for tecton yeah and like they can just you know that they can just like they wouldn't even have to think of new semantics because i think there is this kind of schizophrenia involved with you know working with new files oh my god it's a new file i don't want to deal with new files and like it's like if they could just like use jenkins files and then uh probably just uh, write some simple dsl like uh, create task colon and then put like task name and give whatever yeah I, I, and i think you've got you've got people that will they'll want to do or, or recreate certain parts of their pipeline as tecton but there'll be other bits or other plugins that they'll be using that just make absolutely no sense to convert so like if you're talking about like a, like um maybe archiving junit results and visualizing them in the ui maybe you 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 have the ability to run the in the, in the jenkins file you can run the, the tecton part of the pipeline first and in the end you know, stash this information somewhere mm -hmm. um store this render this and run another plugin on top of that that may make sense yeah and this would integrate like very properly with their old, uh, like uh, the old pipelines that they have. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it, the the idea of like completely repurposing your uh, CI for a new one, like your pipeline for a new one, is is 
is it is uh, taxing in a way uh, from users perspective yep so actually next week we could actually uh, think more about how this could be done should we focus on uh, dsl uh, or tecton in jenkins file and also look at like dot tecton dot lighthouse probably we can have like a session and understand like which one you know would work best for uh, what we need so i think that would be good we could do that cool i think that would be really useful should we aim to have this the session during this meeting um i'm just thinking it would be kind of fun if we have time to try and pull in one of the Jameses or something. <laughs> I don't know what their schedule is now. Uh, to pull, pull in who? Um, Either James Strachan or James Rawlings. Or James and or James or James. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, I, 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 can, I can bully one of them to attend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, bri I'll bribe James, James Rawlings with some wine. <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, that that sounds nice. Actually, we can we we can uh, take uh, we we can ask them. Maybe it would be nice. Actually, they would, if they could uh, provide the perspectives, it'll be it'll be pretty good. Great. Okay. Um, very nice. Any 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 other questions or action items or issues to discuss for cloud native in general or or for GSOC? But but any other cloud native doesn't have to be GSOC specific. Mm, not from my side. I just I just want to start attending the CD foundation meetings a lot more often and not miss them. Yesterday, yesterday when I missed them, I was just like, no, not again. Uh, after the cha timing change. So not, not, not anything in particular. I think we've uh, discussed enough and have a lot of action items actually. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, Great. I am so happy we are we are moving this work and parceling it out uh, for GSOC students because I think this is a really exciting area for them. So it is, it is indeed. Yeah. Cara, right. is the is the the SIG, is that the events in CICD work streaming team? Yes. Um yes. but that is that is it is it still being called a work stream? It's really on the cusp of becoming its own SIG. I think it's just just um I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, th that's what it's in the CDF. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. it's, it's in the CDF calendar at the moment as that. Yeah. But yeah, I think the next one, there isn't one next week. By the looks of things, I think it's every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So next, yeah, 1st of February. Yes, let me pull that up and add it. I have so many uh, event calendars, it's a bit much, actually. I'll put it uh, in the chat notes for the, the CDF event calendar. So you all have that. And um, I'll put it in the notes for the meeting as well. Cool. Guys, where are you located? Where are you working from? Go on, Gar. I am based um, in London. 
and I'm in Northern Ireland. Okay, that's nice. Uh, I'm based off of Bangalore. So you're, yeah, you have a totally, what time is it right now for you? Just so I know, it's better. It's, it's eight, seven. Okay. Okay. So it's not, it's not, it's not great, but it's not terrible. I could see how, yeah, two hours later it was much worse. Okay. I'm glad we moved this meeting. Good. Um, excellent. I've just put the link for the CDF at the top of the, the meeting notes, the calendar. It's kind of a funny looking note, note actually. Cool. Good. All right. I think we have covered a lot of ground um, today's meeting. Thank you all for being here. We have all of us a lot of action items to do, especially Vivav. Thank you for leading these two GSOC proposals. They're both super exciting and I'm really glad we are moving this cloud native work um, and making it available for students to engage with. So excellent. Thank you all for being here. Do you have any last minute questions, Agar? Anything that we can help you with? Actually, no. I mean, I'm okay. just trying to get that. I'm just learning currently. Yes. Good. Good. We all are. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. We will see you at the next meeting. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. You too. Cheers, you too. Cheers.